I was recently asked how this effect was created and the truth is it's super easy. You just have to one, keep a few things in mind when shooting, two, apply one of Final Cut Pro's built-in transitions and three, add a special trick to drive this effect home which I'll show you at the end. You'll want to make sure that you're shooting on a tripod and be sure to keep the lighting and exposure consistent. So manual white balance, manual exposure settings. You can shoot everything in one take by just picking up the items and placing the new items down. I'll also make sure I get a shot where I press this button. It's not essential, but it's nice to have something interactive that gives you a reason to transition from one clip to the other. When it comes to the edit, I'll drop that one long take onto my timeline and start by cutting out all of the parts where I am in the frame, replacing objects. Each cut will probably be fairly short. Next, I'll cut the part of me pressing the buttons. To make the edit easier, I'll move through here frame by frame and each time I press the button down, I'll hit M to make a marker. Once I have all of my markers on the clip, I'll select it and hit Command Shift and the up arrow to bring it above the primary storyline. I'll drag that over my other clips and I'll add a draw mask effect. I'll draw the mask around my editing console and then feather the mask to soften the edges a little bit. If I disable the clips underneath using the shortcut V, you can see that we have the editing console on its own layer. I'll re-enable it and then I'll trim these clips to the marker, which is where the button is pressed. I can play that back and we have a simple jump cut where all of these things just appear. Now we can add a flow transition. I'll search for it here in my transitions browser. It's a built-in transition that comes with Final Cut Pro and I'll add that to all of these cuts. I'll hit T to activate the trim tool and I'll just drag these transitions so the start of the transition lines up with the marker. You'll see here that Final Cut Pro is analyzing for optical flow. And what that means is that it's generating new frames to transition smoothly from one clip to the other. I'll go frame by frame here and notice how the shots morph from one to the other. I'll quickly add an adjustment layer to apply a grade to these clips. You can download a free adjustment layer on my website if you don't have one, link down below. And this is what that looks like. Pretty cool, right? But now it's time for the secret sauce. This shot is static and it needs some movement to really sell the effect. I like to do one of two things, either by creating a slow zoom in or out, so you can add scale keyframes to the adjustment layer. I would usually add it to a new layer to keep things organized, but you could also add the keyframes to the adjustment layer that we already have here. Or the second thing I like to do is add a handheld effect to create some movement. You can use Final Cut Pro's built-in one, which is okay, or you can use the Final Cut Bros truly handheld plugin, which is free by the way, to create some natural handheld movement. Either way, adding some movement to this otherwise static shot is a way to drive this effect home and make it that much more engaging. Let me know if you want to see more of these shoot and edit type tutorials in the comments down below. And if you like this video, you'll definitely want to check out my shoot and edit tutorial on how to create the infinite loop effect next.